Good morning. Hi, it's me, Vicky Marie, with my coffee this morning. So it's very early this morning here in Spain. It's only half past seven, just coming up to half past seven. I've got a little update about Samantha Murphy. Not much of an update, but the police apparently going in a different direction. <clears throat> so, do you know, um, this is my second coffee, so I'm just sort of coming round. I had to actually go out and buy coffee this morning. We had no coffee left. It's a disaster in the morning to not have any coffee, isn't it? Anyway, um, oh, I think, well, I'm, now I'm going to light my candle. So this candle's nearly going as well. That's the second uh, candle, if you like. We'll keep these candles going for um, Samantha's safe return. Anna Knezovic's safe return in Spain. The killer of Rachel Marin to be found. You know, there's all these things we're waiting for. Um, and every morning I've been lighting uh, a candle. for And for all victims, anyone who's missing, any family that's suffering this morning, wondering what's happened to their loved one. Uh, so, what? You, so, little very brief recap because you never know there's always maybe somebody coming on and of course maybe watching this in the future um samantha of course went missing samantha murphy 51 year old mother of three children went missing went for a jog it has now been a month since she disappeared without a trace um and of course there is a playlist for those of you who want to catch up on all the information about Samantha. Um, anyway, it started off, there was high hopes, you know, that she would be found safe and well. The police said there was nothing suspicious. Then they declared that it was suspicious. And then they declared that they think they're looking for a body. So the police have been drip feeding information, haven't they? Uh, I think most of us more or less think um that the police know a lot more than they're letting on probably you know i've got a suspect in mind they've more or less said that without saying it in so many words they said everyone's a suspect you know everybody's been investigated samantha is married um runs a business with her husband mick um we're all hoping you know there's been aspersions cast against him of course as always are with the partner because, you know, that is just statistically uh, a fact that, you know, it often is the partner. Um, anyway, but it's all speculation at the moment. Now, what I want to do is, you know, well, for me, and I think for all of us, we hope against hope there is nothing to do with me, because then that means that those children, those three children, uh, two of which are very, very young, they're all young, but... Um, they're, they're without their mum and if they if it turns out their dad is involved in this uh, whatever this is um they've lost their dad as well so it's very you know we hope there isn't to do with him um so this morning you know well as was yesterday morning in australia there was the announcement that the police are now looking at the local phone towers um, and, and collecting the data from there. Now, a few of you have been rightly so, so well, why are they only just doing that? Well, I doubt very much that they're only just doing that personally. They've probably been doing it for ages. They're only just saying that they're doing that. Or they may have been waiting for permissions. Or you, I, I don't know. We don't know the ins and outs, what the um, procedure is. But I think, in my opinion, every bit of information they release uh, to the news is because they want that information to be out there. So they probably have been checking these phone towers um, and now they feel it's time that they want to say something about it. So let's have a look at a news programme that explains what's happening. And they're describing it as a major step. So let's see. Let's see what News 7 has got to say about it. 
Detectives searching for Ballarat mother Samantha Murphy have opened up a new line of inquiry. They are now trawling through mobile phone pings to identify who was in the area when the 51-year-old vanished. Hope Wilson reports. It was sorry, and I just want to say it's a very heavily populated area, even though you know where she went missing is like a trail, you know, bushland and a trail that people walk on and run on. Uh, the actual area of Ballarat, because this is in Ballarat in Australia, very highly pop populated area. So there'll be thousands of um, of cars will have gone past, people will have gone on the trail. You know, it's not a small job, so it take a lot of going through. They'll be looking for particular phones, phone numbers, won't they, for particular pings, I think. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not a policeman, but um, I'm sure they already perhaps have some information. Maybe they're trying to scare someone or trying to make... I, feel, I don't know why. I just feel like they're trying to make somebody do something or crack or, you know, make a wrong move. I feel like they've got a suspect. Or, well, more than one suspect, they said. Uh, even at once, uh, somebody reported multiple suspects. I mean, you know, is this sort of like organised crime? Is it a gang? Is it somebody just with help? Which they seem to think she was targeted. So just to remind you all, uh, the police have said they don't think there's any reason to think anybody else is in danger. So they obviously do feel that Samantha herself was targeted for whatever reason. It's four weeks yesterday that Samantha Murphy went for a run and then never came home. Now police are using a new tactic. They're going to trawl through mobile data to work out exactly who else was in the area in the hours after the mother of three disappeared. Once they have that information, they're then going to look at the backgrounds of each of those people trying to find a new lead in this case. This is a new tactic from police trying to find other people. They have used this data before to try to find Samantha Murphy. There are unconfirmed reports her her phone pinged in the afternoon she disappeared and then in the weeks later it helped police narrow down their search area yeah this was something right from the beginning it was said that her but the police have never confirmed this it was said that her phone pinged around five o'clock that evening um you know now bear in mind she went for a run between 7 seven thirty in the morning supposedly so why her phone uh, pinged it's five o'clock that evening is a very strange thing uh they reckon that they have traced her digital fit footprint if you like that she did go for a run she did seven kilometers then something happened and we don't know if they know that from the mobile phone data or if they know that from the apple watch data because she was wearing an apple watch we just know that they're convinced of that and that led them to pinpoint their search to a certain area in Mount Clear. And they went back and searched there, but they haven't said whether they found anything significant. They have stopped searching uh, ages ago, to be honest. After the first week, they stopped searching the initial sort of area that it's thought that Samantha went for a run. Uh, but they've let the public carry on searching. There's been the community has searched. Uh, there they got in a, a bushcraft expert, uh, Jake, didn't they? Jake Cassar, he went and helped. Uh, but that particular search, it was abandoned this weekend, just gone because of bushfires. So that's another thing that, you know, there, are, there were bushfires not far away and there's um speculation again i don't think it's been confirmed officially that those bushfires may have been started deliberately so you know the mystery thickens if you like um so the police you know they apparently again they did confirm that they had issued multiple search warrants but we don't know the specific properties that they've searched we do know that they've been to samantha's house and search there or at least a limited search there they've been to the business that she had with her husband the inland um what was it inland body works which is a smash car smash uh repair shop you know they've been there and taken away items 
So we know sort of bits and pieces, but nothing officially confirmed from the police that they have any evidence in particular, but I'm sure they do. I'm sure they're collecting their evidence and I'm sure they're collecting their phone data. And they're just, it feels to me that they're like releasing these crumbs. It's like a trail, like a Hansel and Gretel trail uh, of, oh yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that, when it suits them to say what they're doing, which is fair enough. It's a police investigation. And um, yeah, so th this, what they're saying now, we have to try and, so what does this mean? We have to try and work out what it means because all of us that are concerned, you know, Samantha Murphy did what a lot of women do every day, went out for a jog, uh, a routine jog and disappeared, you know, and it may be you go out jogging, you go out walking your dogs, go out for a walk on your own. You, We can all relate to this no matter where we are area to that Mount Clear area. Unfortunately, though, that didn't give police anything else to work with. There are very few leads in this investigation. Police say this is just one line of inquiry. They are trawling through 12,000 hours of security footage, as well as working with hundreds of reports that have been... Yeah, 12,000 hours of security footage because a lot of the residents in this part of Ballarat, it's a very wealthy area. Um, and most of the residents have got um, CCTV, so there's a lot of CCTV to trawl through. Um, yeah, it, now these are like searchers have gone out with metal detectors because this is a gold mining um, place, you know, years ago the gold miners were there, the prospectors. So uh, it's popular amongst, you know, people go there for that reason to try and sort of hope that they might find a little bit of gold. And there are lots of mine shafts. So the mine shafts have been a source of speculation that she may have fallen down a mine shaft. Um, you know, there's lots of, there's been lots of speculation, as you can imagine. But I personally, but the police are not interested in this area at all now. So I do feel um, the police have got something, but it's like, till they find, I think as soon as they find Samantha's body, uh, which hopefully they will, um, and I'm, I'm sorry to say body, I just realised I actually said body, but the police themselves said that they were looking for a body. They think they're looking for a body now. Uh, and that needs to be found. And then I think there may be an arrest quickly after that. But they need that physical evidence, don't they? You feel like there's a bit of a cat and mouse situation going on. Coming in from the public, this mobile phone data has helped police in other major... So that there, uh, just going back to that. This was the search, you know, all the people that turned up to search. And this is... We looked at all the drama that was going on on Facebook, on Sausage Gate. You know, there was uh, because people donated to a GoFundMe and they had a barbecue. And then it was somebody was accusing somebody else of taking a tray of sausages home or something. You know, just all the usual silly drama that goes on when people get together in a, in a group of people. There's always going to be some drama. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of the community turned out. The search was very well organised, apparently. Jake Kassar, he was leading the search. People were on their advertising for organisers for the next search. So there wasn't one last weekend because of the bushfires, but the, the, the actual uh, group that organised the searches, they're actually advertising for leaders, you know, people who know about leading um, to leading groups, search groups, etc., to apply it because they're planning on going back out again next weekend. Other major high-profile investigations, like with the missing campers in Victoria's high country with Carol Clay and Russell Hill, that helped police lead to a breakthrough. They're hoping that can happen again. It has been... You know, you just wish that these pictures you could talk on the... I feel like she's trying to talk to people because I had a dream about her, which uh, is on my members' uh, videos, um, various of my chatterati of, of, of people who come in my chat. I've said they've had dreams about her as well. So I think she's trying to put a message across as best she can. Um, 
from wherever she is and we still there is still the chance you know that she may have been kidnapped uh i think they're quite affluent so i don't know if there's been a kidnap um i mean for all we know there may have been um a, a ransom note there may have been a request for money and the police are just not saying anything about it so for all we know they may be looking for um you know a gang that's kidnapped her because they definitely said more than one person they believe more than one person was involved so it may well be that they've had a ransom note she may be alive somewhere we have to stay hopeful um you know the police definitely know more than they're letting on of course they do uh but we won't find out the full story until everything comes to a head will we in one month since the mother of three disappeared. In the days after her disappearance, her husband said people just don't vanish into thin air. Police now trying to work out exactly. All this speculation about, you know, all the newspapers, uh, they always show him smiling and laughing with that picture that they got of him. So, you know, but whether he's genuinely involved or not, we just don't know. What happened? So there you go, that's sort of really it, you know, that for what we know so far, um, <clears throat> it could be that more comes up where it would be sort of night time now in Australia. So probably nothing more is going to come out this morning. It'll be tomorrow in Australia before anything, if anything, um, comes out. I don't think I've got anything else to tell you about that. So, um, I just want to say thank you, have a good day or a good evening or a good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, I'll be, if I hear anything more, of course, I'll be back for an update. Um, we just want some to be found, don't we, you know, uh, and God knows those children, just every day that goes past is a torture for those children, not knowing what's happened to their mom. So, uh you know, keep the candle burning. Just hope for a resolution of one kind or another as soon as possible. Put those children, you know, give them some sort of resolution as to what has happened to their mum. I hope they're okay. I hope they'll be, you know, I don't know who they're with at the moment. I presume they're with their dad. Um, just hope they're okay. I don't know if they're going to school. Um, how can they go to school, really, in the midst of all this? Just very, very sad. So, okay, so I will remember to live and love wisely, carefully, and I'll see you really soon in the next video. Don't forget to put your fingerprint on the like button, please. And if you're not subscribed, you may be watching this and you've not subscribed, please think about subscribing because that really helps my channel out and if you press the notification bell then you'll get all notifications of new videos and new updates about samantha or any of the other cases that i'm following so thank you so much and until i see you again may your god go with you <laughs>